Hi friend, David here from Learn Stage Lighting and today on Learn Stage Lighting Gear we're talking about setting up the Netron EP2. Now this isn't a review video I believe we've done in the past for the EP2 uh, but we will go over kind of some of the basics as we get into setting it up. Um, so the EP2 is a two port node from Obsidian Control Systems it is a really high-end professional grade, you know, really nice node with great paint. Um, and that's kind of an inside joke. Um, and, and a lot of really great things about it. Um, and a few things that I don't like. We'll talk about that too as we set it up. Um, but basically it's able to be wall mounted, DIN mounted, clamp mounted, pre uh, junction box mounted, pretty much any way you want to mount this thing you can. And then you got to set it up with your console, your control software, whatever it is you have. Okay, so let's talk about that process and what you need to do in order to make it happen. Okay, so got the EP2 here. And uh, just as a quick little overhead, um, you have on the side the ability to plug it in Ethernet, which you you need to plug it in Ethernet to get data. Um, but it can be powered via PoE or in the box you get USB-C cord as well. So I'm just going to go ahead with an Ethernet drop here that I've got. Plug it in. PoE. Done. We're going to see it start to boot up now. Okay. So it only takes a couple seconds, which is awesome. And you have a screen and LCD that has all the info. Now, there are two ways to set up Netron nodes. In this video, we're really just going over using the screen, okay? Uh, if you have an EP4, for example, that doesn't have a screen, um, this is where the Netron central utility downloadable from Obsidian Control Systems can really help. Also, if you're setting up a lot of nodes, using the Netron Central Utility for setup and or management of those nodes down the road is a huge plus. Okay, so we've got our screen here. We've got the ability that shows this power, activity, and data link. Okay, super helpful. Uh, light up as well, uh, but little uh, indicators here which help us as well. So, click into it. The first thing we see here is presets. The presets in Netron Gear is great because you have Netron presets and you have user presets. Okay, so the user presets you can define, the Netron presets are just out of the box presets. For example, the first preset, Artnet 2.x. Okay, this one is obviously, oh, I say obviously, but the reason they make this one the default, this is preset one, is because if you dial into this Artnet 2.x and you go to an Onyx console or PC and turn on Artnet with the default settings, this will work, okay? done right um, it sets up artnet for receiving it's outputting artnet through its two ports though it can do input and uh, you know done universe uh, zero and two is what mine is set up to now actually so if I actually load that preset sorry so I just click through we load it right here all right so we've loaded that preset for artnet 2.x we now have an IP address displayed on the screen, tells us that we're doing universe one and two. Um, and being Artnet, the universes can go down to zero. Okay, let's talk about how to change that. So if we go back in, we've loaded the preset, but once you load the preset, you're able to modify it. So I can go to DMX ports, for example, port one. Mode can be input or output. We just click in, you can change that. Can disable it also send value which is interesting you can just send a DMX value universe I apologize for that okay so the art net numbering on this is actually 1 through 32767 uh, protocol art net you get the choice art net SACN none frame rate you change the speed art net on or off uh, you can literally just have it clone off the other port, so whatever the other port's set to, it's just going to do like a DMX splitter. Change whatever you want, and then back out of that, and you'll be done. Okay, uh, let's talk about the other presets. So as mentioned, there are other Netron presets, such as Artnet in the 10.x, 
Artnet in the 192X, um, DHCP, Artnet in, Artnet in through, and then the same with SACN. Uh, and to be honest, uh, for a lot of people, like I think most people, uh, within these 10 presets that are already predefined, you're going to get what you need. But if you're in a space, a live production space, where you do different setups from time to time, you can bring in your own user presets, okay, which is super cool. So we can go and pop out to the user presets. We have 10 of them. Go into preset, preset one, and boom, you could just go save preset here. So basically, it's the same process to load it. Okay, you would choose load preset. Um, you'd go to, you know, menu, user presets, load preset one, load up whatever's in there. Uh, to build that preset, you just set up the node the way you want. So you go in through the menu like we just did, right? And you're like, okay, you know, I'm gonna go in here and go to ports, you know, set my, my universes, set my, my type of output on the ports. It is worth noting, you can have one port be Artnet, one port be SACN, one can be in, one can be out, totally flexible. Um, the only thing, and then, and so, sorry, we'll get ahead. Um, and then you just go to presets, user presets, save preset, however it's set up gets saved. The caveat that I have with EP2s is that the processing in EP2s is not as robust as the processing in EP4s, EN4s, EN12s, all the rest of the line, okay? So the processing in an EP2, the merging and backup options are not as robust as those higher level nodes. So if you've used those higher level nodes before, um, just be aware that not every feature, every advanced feature is available in the two. Okay, um, so that's really important to know. Just don't don't assume that. Uh, but other than that, you know, you pop through this menu. Um, you can go in. You can test the DMX. Check out the Artnet that's coming through, which can be just a, such a great troubleshooting tool. Um, set the IP address. Um, you have the ability to set it via DHCP or automatic. Um, so that's nice. Um, under system, you can name the device, set the ID so that you can see it in the Netron uh, app, as I mentioned. Um, you can even set the Artnet off. So right now, actually, that's a good point. So by default, it's universe zero is one, but you can make it universe zero zero. You can lock it, set it what to do on startup. Okay. So does it send a zero data? Does it wait? Um, and, and I do have to say, you know, having that ability in there is something that sets this apart from other two port nodes, um, specifically less expensive ones, because now if you've got like a house light system that um, senses DMX, or you've got something where there's merging involved and, and you know, the node boots up and it has something saved in it and, and that's not what you want, you want zero, um, you know, this allows you to customize that behavior on startup. Same, as, same with signal loss. Um, so when it loses signal, again, this can be great with house light systems. This can be great if you're merging uh, with another console or with a house light system. Uh, you know, does it disable? Does it fade? Does it hold forever? Um, the fade ones are great uh, because it gives you a timing on that, okay? So up to, you know, basically, you know, one of the things that happens, like at my church, for example, is we have a house light system, okay? Um, and, and we have Onyx running our lights on a computer, okay, with a, with a DMX, uh, uh, output, okay? And we have the node hold the last look, just so that if anything happens on the PC, it holds that last look forever, you can reboot, get back into it, um, and, and you'll be good to go, okay? But if somebody goes and turns off the system before they've hit the button to turn the house lights on on the wall panel, um, the room does plunge to darkness, okay? Having that little safety in there, just so that somebody can go, oh no, I just turned the, the system off, gives them 30 seconds to go hit the button on the house light control before the room goes into darkness, which is super helpful. Um, otherwise, under the hood, you know, there's not a lot of other stuff in there, like you can check out the software version, there's, there's other utilities, but honestly, um, we've covered, you know, probably 99% of what people are gonna use these nodes for. And, you know, the EP2s are great, we like them a lot, and they're so easy to set up. If you need EP2s, we keep them in stock at Learn Stage Lighting Gear. We would love to serve you with this, any other need for nodes, Onyx stuff, and anything lighting, and in fact, anything audiovisual. Um, but we love to help people, and we would love to earn your trust and have you as a customer. So if that sounds great, 
head over to LearnStageLightingGear.com. We love to help, and we'll see you there. Thanks.